Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to Aircraft Structures 1 course. Uh, this is Professor Anub Ghosh from Aerospace Engineering Department IIT Kharagpur. We are in the third week of the series. So, we have you, you, you are already introduced uh, with the truss system. Truss system you are basically introduced with the plane truss system. And, uh, a small example, two small examples we have done in our last lecture. Uh, in that, uh, in the first example, we have seen how the overall equilibrium to consider to find out forces and uh, from separating the members, how to prepare the free body diagram and uh, then to continue for uh, the solution of the total problem. Uh, then we have already also learned the method of sections, which is a very e easy and efficient way of finding out a particular member force, but that requires some experience unless uh, you are bit, you, you have uh, solved some problems, it is difficult to use that method. With that uh, foundation uh, of plane truss, uh, we will move forward for solution of plane truss or similar problem this in this lecture and in forthcoming lecture we will move forward to three dimensional or space structures sometimes uh, space truss mainly we will solve space truss but this week this lecture uh, this lecture particularly will consider method of joints and uh, in in this we will let us see how do we solve. But before that like every other uh, lecture starting, we would like to revisit what we have done already. We have seen where from uh, the solid mechanics or structural analysis has started and where we are at present. We have seen how the aircraft uh, has progressed uh, and come to a huge aircraft from a small one. From there, we have come to loads coming on the aircraft. We have learned about flight envelope, we have learned about load factor, shear and moment on wing of an aircraft we have solved, how to find out shear and moment on wing, how to uh, solve for shear and moment in coming experienced by a fuselage that is also solved. And then as just now we have talked about introduction to method of sections we have covered and to some extent introduction to truss structures uh, have uh, been covered in the last uh, lecture. This week the same truss system only we will be doing, but uh, method of joints with stress on the method of joints. Method of joints if we look at in this analysis of a uh, truss by method of joints, the two equations of static equilibrium that is horizontal forces or f x equals to 0 and vertical forces or summation of f y equals to 0 are applied for each joint. That is the reason each joint gives us two equilibrium equations. equations we need to consider the free body and then we need to free body of that particular joint and need to apply these two. Two unknown forces may be obtained since we have two equations, two unknown forces we can find out. Since each uh, member is an axial rod, two force members, it exerts equal and opposite forces on the joints at its ends. 
So, uh, while we talk about trust, this is very, very important uh, to notice that uh, in most of the cases we, we for analysis purpose, uh, we, we consider those as two force members and we solve it. Uh, the joints of the truss must be analyzed in sequence by starting at a joint which has only two members meeting with unknown forces. This is quite obvious since uh, if we have more members, uh, unknown members, then we would not be able to solve the joint or all the forces at the joint or all the member forces at the joint. So, that we need to keep it in mind while we are considering joint. Then the joints are analyzed in the proper sequence until all joints have been considered if necessary. To find the unknown reactions, consider the entire structure as a free body. So, sometimes uh, this is done before we go for the unknown member forces. Uh, so, overall reactions, support reactions we can if we can find out that becomes easy to find out the forces in the member. The same example as we have already mentioned in the previous class that uh, this uh, member force 5, this, this member force 5 is supposed to be found out. In the last week, in the last lecture we have considered one section here and uh, in this, this example, we will not consider section, but uh, we will we see how can we find out the forces using method of joints, because method of joints is most more important while we will be solving three dimensional trusses, that there it helps method of section does not help much. Okay, so, three unknown reactions, uh, this is uh, one arrow has to be put here this is a reaction 6 y, this is roller support that is why only one reaction, there are two reactions because it is pin joint support and we have horizontal forces. So, there must be some reactions at 4 at 4 in the horizontal direction. Several uh, methods are available for analyzing truss structure, two are discussed and applied in solving this example, two means one we have done already other we will be doing now. So, here we find out the overall reactions uh, of the structures from the support as we have already discussed why we sometimes it helps a lot to uh, using method of joints that is what is done. So, in this case uh, it is considered that these supports are removed and there are two reactions here at this point and one reaction, reaction here is acting in this point and a summation of m 4 equals to 0 that means, we are considering moment about point 4 uh, is equals to 0. So, that is what is done 200 multiplied by 10 this 4 000, sorry 2000 multiplied by 10 4000 multiplied by 10 this way, this way, this way it is acting and uh, 1000 multiplied by 30 10 10 10 acting this way all are in the same direction minus 20 r y this is acting the other way as it is it is better to put a an arrow on this. So, this is acting in the other direction. So, that is the reason uh, the equation is formed this way and if we solve this equation easily we get that the vertical reaction is 4500 pound. Once we have found out the vertical reaction, what uh, at, at 6 joint 6 what we are doing is that we are considering sum of uh, horizontal forces equals to 0 and sum of, sum of vertical forces equals to 0. This sum of horizontal forces will give us this unknown force because there is no unknown no more unknown remaining 
and the sum, sum of vertical forces will give us this unknown reaction because this is already known. So, accordingly what we get? We get R x R 4 x is equals to 2000 pound. It is uh, quite apparent from the structure also that it is supposed to balance this force is supposed to be balanced by this because there is no other horizontal force in overall way acting on the system. And 4 y is equals to if we consider the vertical equilibrium I think there is a typographical mistake. So, what is the mistake is this R 4 y acting upward minus 2 are acting downward. So, this should not be there, this should be R 6 y equals to 0. Okay. So, um, R 6 y is already known. So, from that uh, there we, we can easily find out R 4 y as equals to 500 pound. Okay. So, the direction of unknown forces uh, in each member are assumed as in the previous example and vectors are changed on the sketch when they are found to be negative. So, this is a general convention we do and that way it is, it is shown here. So, what we are doing first is the joint 4 is uh, separated out first. This is the joint 4, this joint method of joints. The other way if we look at it is something like this, here is a section cut out and this joint is kept aside. So, if we draw a free body diagram for this particular joint and as we have already discussed uh, horizontal force summation equals to 0, vertical force summation is equals to 0 and that is what is applied here and that gives us F 2 is equals to 2000 pound and F 1 is equals to 500 pound. So, this method is really easy, but it is a this kind of tedious method we need to follow step by step uh, the joints and we need to find out the forces. So, once we have found out the joint 4, see this, this member force is already known. So, if we consider this joint, here the unknown forces are this and this. So, we have two equations easily we can find out uh, these two member forces that is what is done here in this the joint F 3 is taken as kept aside, free body diagram of that joint 3 is prepared, 500 is the F 1 force is applied here external force 2000 pound is applied there and then it is simple, it is uh, vertical moment equilibrium is considered, sorry vertical force equilibrium is considered 45 degree and uh, if uh, F 4 sin 45 degree is equals to 0 and then it gives us that F 4 is equals to 707 pound and uh, similarly, if we consider the horizontal force equilibrium. So, 707 cos 45 comes here and F 3 we can find out as 2500 pound. So, there is a, I do not think much things to explain only, only we can see where to move to find out the uh, member force unknown member force F 5. So, if we clean this at present after solving this, this member forces is force is known, this member force is known, this member force is known. And if we come here in the uh, last slide, we have found out this member force also. So, considering this joint, this is not known, this is not known. So, only two unknowns are there. So, if we attempt this joint, we can easily find out the F 5. Whereas, if we attempt this joint, here we do not have 
2 or less unknowns, we have 3 unknowns here. So, better not to attempt this joint, it is better to attempt this, this joint and accordingly to find out the member force. And uh, since our aim is to find out the F 5, here we have only, uh, only to, we have a considered F vertical equilibrium only, F y in the y direction equilibrium only uh, and accordingly we get, I think this is another mistake. 707 uh, 45 degree is not correct. This is 707 only, this is not there. So, with that we get that F 5 is equals to 500 pound. Okay. So, um, uh, we have solved two problems, uh, two problems uh, uh, one in one method, the other one in two methods uh, and this one is uh, not exactly or principally truss, but we can solve this problem considering truss concept and uh, let us see how do we do because in general the truss members are, are not loaded uh, transverse to its axis. So, but in this particular case this member and this member is loaded transverse to the, this axis in the uh, um, upward direction. So, uh, principally this is not a truss, but this this type of problem can be solved using concept of truss. Let us see this structure usually are classified as trusses because of the reasons as I told you since the analysis is similar to that used for trusses. As shown in member 1, 2 and 2, 3 are not axial rods and separate free body diagram for these members are required. So, as I told you we need to consider these two members as a separate free body and we need to do. Let us see how do we solve this problem. Since each of these members has four unknown reactions, two at this end, two at this end. The equations of static equilibrium are not sufficient to find all four unknowns. <clears throat> it is possible though to find the vertical reactions R 1 y, R 2 y, R 2 prime y, R 3 y equals to 100 pound and to obtain the reactions R 1, 1 x equals to R 2 x and R 2 prime x equals to R 3 x from the equation of equilibrium. So, this is uh, more on like uh, equations of equilibrium is applied and from the symmetry of uh, the structure we can find out that since dimension I do not remember I need to go back this is 20 inch, this is 20 inch, this is 30 degrees. So, this dimension is not required. So, that is the reason total 200 pound is acting here, it is completely symmetric one and it is shared by these two that is the reason it is said all these forces are equals to 100 pound and this is uh, in the transverse completely transverse direction it is acting and uh, these two are has to e e be equal otherwise equilibrium will not be maintained. That is the reason we say that R 1 x is equal to R 2 x and R 2 prime x equals to R 3 x. So, member 1 2 if we look at 
uh, horizontal equilibrium gives these two and vertical equilibrium gives these two and from symmetry since those, those two are two symmetric we can easily consider that these are 100 pounds. This uh, already I have discussed. Uh, so, this is uh, we can skip now. When the unknown reactions obtained from member 1, 2 and 2, 3 are applied to the remaining part of the structure as a free body, it is apparent that the rest of the analysis is similar to that of previous example. So, it is almost similar to the previous example as it is said those forces are applied here as shown here and then considering joints one after another we can easily find out the forces. So, first this joint is considered. So, S 1 uh, we, we are keeping the name here as S 1 here also we say S 1. So, you please do not get come confused with this S 1 and this S 1 better uh, in this course, let us uh, make it this is uh, S 3 5. So, this is 3 5 S 1 sin 30 is equals to 100 from this vertical equilibrium equation we can get and S 1 is 200 that is what we get. So, this is S 1 3 5 this is 3 5 and uh, corresponding way the R 3 3 x uh, what we get the horizontal that we have got that those are equal these two are equal, but uh, uh, what is the amount or how much pound it is that we did not find out. So, this is the value of that force. So, this joint is known we move to that second joint R 5. So, in this uh, what we can say that this S 1 is actually S 4 5, this is 4 5 and it goes on. This is 4 5, see please consider that this is 4 5. So, what do we do in this this how many unknowns we have uh, this 200 is already known from the previous example from this joint there is no other force is acting. So, this is 200 about this joint if we look at uh, both the forces are acting in tra transverse direction from simple equilibrium we get that this force is 200. So, from there if we look at this is 30 degree yes here it is written this is also 30 degree. So, this is cos component acting in this direction 200 cos 30 this is acting in this direction this one and this S 2 sin this is also acting in this direction. So, this makes us the summation of f x equals to 0 and remaining part uh, I think only to put the numerical values and we can find out we get the equation of S 1 and S 2. So, if we go for the vertical equilibrium direction, so this 200 sin 30 this is this component is coming here and then 200 it is being added this one this is the 200 and this vertical component is this is coming here and along with that this is also coming 
this S 2 is coming as cos 60. So, that gives us another equation with S 1 and S 2 this is second equation and if we solve these two equations we get S 2 equals to 200 and S 1 4 5 is equals to 400. So, uh, this is explaining is much easier, but uh, while we solve problem we do sometimes uh, small mistakes be careful while you solve problems. And in this joint we have found out at this point of time this is known, this is known, this is found out and this is also found out. Let us move to the next slide. Okay. This slide uh, is about joint 1, joint 1 reactions at 1 on wall, we need to find out. Here uh, this 400 pound is already known because this is pin joint and it is a 2 force member, this is already known one the reaction here we need to find out reaction at 1 that is the re reason it is stated reaction at 1 on the wall. So, R O x or 0 x sometimes we say the reaction is uh, we are considering this as 1732 is the this uh, member force already we have found out those are equal and uh, we have got that and this 200 cos 30 is coming from this 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 member this is also 30 degree so that is uh, sorry this is 30 degree so that is the reason we have the cos component here and that gives us the horizontal force as 346.4 pound and the vertical equilibrium condition if we consider from same this this member force sign component is coming and that gives us 200 pound as the vertical force. Here one important point uh, better to note down uh, with that point uh, we will conclude. All members except 1, 2 and 2, 3 may be designed as simple tension or compression members. The horizontal members 1, 2 and 2, 3 must be designed for bending combined with axial and shear loads. This is what uh, I, I try to tell you, inform you at, at the beginning of, of the solution of this problem. So, these two members, these two members are not designed completely as axially loaded members these are designed for shear loads as well. Uh, if the member the force is much more bending moment is also much more then we sometimes need to design it for bending moment also. With this uh, let us conclude today's lecture. Uh, references are as usual I do not find any point to repeat. What we have learned is that uh, truss structure mainly three examples we have done on truss structure, uh, plane truss structures and uh, in, in the next lecture we will move to the three dimensional structures basically the three dimensional trusses which are uh, very very popular in, in aircraft structures. In big example is uh, if you if you look at the tail boom of helicopter those are uh, three dimensional trusses not only that those are still being used you, you can find many small helicopters use that three dimensional truss tail boom of helicopter. Not only there in many other places most important the basic analysis of any landing gear is considered uh, as a three dimensional truss structure and the primary analysis of the landing gear is generally done you considering those as a uh, truss structures and then uh, more fine analysis, more detailed analysis is carried out while we have 
other forces found out and uh, we continue that way. So, with that uh, thank you for attending this lecture, we will come back with three dimensional truss next in our next le lecture. Thank you.